So I don't know about you, but I was making so much more art consistently before I decided to try and take my art career full time. It feels like I am constantly being overrun with administrative tasks, like answering emails and marketing myself and editing videos for YouTube. And like, I love doing this. I love the mix that I've been able to create for myself of being an artist and a content creator. Like I like both personally, but at the end of the day, like art is my passion and I want to figure out like ways to make more of it. You know what I mean? And that requires very diligent time management. But I'm also a very firm believer in working smarter and not harder. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys the six tools that I use to make my whole life easier as an artist and a content creator. Things that legitimately save me hours of time every single week. Like I absolutely would not be able to run my business without these tools. Some of them are newcomers, some of them have been mainstays of my process for years, but either way, they are absolutely crucial. The first tool that I wanna to talk to you guys about is Koji. So, when you are starting to build your art career, you start to develop just a lot of different presences online, like I have a Patreon, I have a YouTube channel, I have a podcast, I want people to subscribe to my email list, I have an online shop, and keeping track of all of these links and having an easy way to like send all of these links to someone is absolutely crucial. If someone texts me or DMs me and they wanna have a link to a thing, I can just send them my Koji profile and it gets on here, just look for it there. And that has saved me a ridiculous amount of time trying to like get all of this stuff because I only ever have to set up my profile once. It is a link in bio, that is true. So it does work obviously really well for platforms like Instagram and Twitter and Twitch and uh, TikTok, for example, but it by no means is only a link in bio. It is also just so much more than just a standard link in bio. I use Koji for tons of marketing stuff. Koji has hundreds of mini apps on their mini app store that you can use in so many ways. There is quite literally an app for just about anything. I've sold physical products on my Koji profile in the past. I also have a place to take donations. I also have a spot for affiliate links on my profile. You can sign it for my newsletter there. I have links to everything, my Patreon, my online shop, etc. And this is new. I also have a guest book that I'm using right now to solicit video ideas. So if you have a question, if you want me to cover a specific topic, you can send me a message on this guest book. It's like a public wall of messages basically. And pitch me a video idea and I can make it. You guys tend to send me great video ideas, but if I don't write them down, they get lost. So I feel like this guest book mini app on my Koji profile is going to turn out to be a really great way for you guys to suggest video ideas to me and for me to also be able to have a one-stop shop for all of your ideas. So if you guys submit video ideas to this mini app on my Koji profile, I don't have to do any extra work to keep track of them, to organize them, etc. They're all very nicely in one spot. If you are not at the stage right now where you have a budget for a website. Koji has tons of free options for you to start monetizing your art and your audience and start making a living from your work without needing to do much of anything. It makes it really easy. You can sell physical and digital products in your Koji profile. You can take commissions. You could even sell one-on-one -on -one coaching or mentorship calls. I've been using some really cool Koji apps to get more engagement from my audience. You can, for example, give me a donation on my Koji profile and send a note attached to it. And with this new guestbook mini app, I can can get all of your video ideas in one place, which is great. Okay, so now that we've talked about Koji, we have to talk about Notion. Notion is one of those tools that I just like legitimately use every single day. Like I keep it open all the time. This is where I keep track of literally everything. So right now what you're seeing is my YouTube content calendar. So this is the video that we're filming and you're watching right now. So very meta of me, but I keep talking of a bunch of stuff like the platform is going to go on, the status, the type, the topic, uh, who's sponsoring it, when it has to go live, etc. And this is like my entire content calendar. It's very much like always in flux and always in progress. I don't plan ahead typically very much. I used to, and then I discovered that I actually have pretty good ideas and I'm just kind of left to my own devices, so I do that more so now. If you're looking over here at all of this stuff, 
you can see that we've just got tons of things um, that I keep track of. Over here, I have like my business plan, for example. So I have some tasks, some goals. I brainstorm merchant product ideas and Notion. I have some revenue goals. I have like a business wish list. So like camera gear that I want to invest in pretty soon. Um, I keep track of like some merch ideas. I have like my yearly goals, like all of my goals for 2022. I keep track of in Notion and it just it saves me so much time and also like mental energy to know that i have a place where all of this stuff lives it is so so important and having like that one go-to space for all of the stuff that i'm doing online for all of the stuff that's part of my business for like my shop update for brainstorming merch ideas and video ideas and voiceover ideas and like keep track of my podcast keeping that nicely organized saves me a ton of time. Most of my time is spent over here in this calendar view. By the way, I have Notion templates for tons of stuff if you're interested, but I also have the business plan. This I use a little bit less, mostly to just check in with myself and figure out where I wanna go next with my business. But these two views right here, so the business plan and then like this YouTube homepage where I have like some notes over here, some links to other things. The content calendar is really where I spend the bulk of my time. And yeah, it just, it saves me so much time and it's so nice to have all of us organized in a really nice way. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about is TubeBuddy. So TubeBuddy, if you weren't already aware, is a keyword research tool for YouTube. It's like a Chrome extension basically, but it saves me a lot of time when it comes to researching topics for my videos. So. I use YouTube as the primary like top of my marketing funnel for my art business. This is the platform that I spend the most time on. It's the platform that I've invested almost two years of my life in. And that effort has definitely been paying off dividends, especially recently. And I've started to make money from YouTube AdSense and sponsorships and stuff. And a huge part of being able to do that is making the right videos and optimizing them in the right way. And that is where TubeBuddy comes in. So. The feature that I use the most often in TubeBuddy is right over here. It is their Keyword Explorer tool. I use this to research basically every video topic that I'm about to make or interested in making to see if it's worth my time. Sometimes, yes, I will make videos without them having to be like searchable or particularly like strategy driven, but a big part of trying to build a career and market myself is just kind of having to care about the numbers. So. I like analytics and I like sort of optimizing things and so I'm passionate about this kind of stuff and it's okay if you're not, but I think it's worth looking into regardless. I will have affiliate links for all of the stuff I'm talking about today down in the description if you're interested in that. But let me sort of walk you through what the Keyword Explorer tool is and sort of how I use it. So let's think of a video idea. Um, I did this one recently. Um, ways to make money as an artist. So it'll show me like the most featured kind of fill in things as I type. So if I just typed in ways to make money, it already has a bunch of suggestions based on sort of what people are already searching on YouTube. So ways to make money online, ways to make money as a teenager, but I'm interested in ways to make money as an artist. And then I hit enter and it's coming up with an overall score and a score analysis. So I think there are a couple of really important metrics that TubeBuddy shares with you. Main among them is the search volume. So with long tail keywords, i.e. keywords that are like more than a couple of words in length, you're going to have search, like the search volume of it decrease because people type in shorter things, like more people type in shorter keywords and longer keywords. And so you're going to have a decrease in search volume that way, but that's where competition comes in. So competition tells me how good this keyword is to target for my specific channel. So it takes in my specific channel into consideration here and it has it in the yellow, which means that it's not bad, but it's not great either. So if it's all the way green, and if that number is 100 out of 100, then I should definitely make that video. But as it is for this specific keyword, it's 46 out of 100. So it's just okay. Like I could stand out if I made a really good video, or if I look into the results over here, maybe I can make a thumbnail that stands out from all of these ones. But this is my video right here, the one that I just made. It's already ranking for this keyword. I just released this video like this morning um, and it's already ranking number five, 
but you'll notice that for that video, I wrote over 30 ways you can make money as an artist. So I still had this keyword in there, but I added on more to it. So over here, the lowest video view count found in top ranking videos, the one that it's talking about is actually my video that we see right over here, 754. The way that I do this, this would be like the starting off keyword. So this is the idea that I have. As we can see, the overall score is just okay. But what if I typed in a specific number of ways, like over 30? It's loading. Okay, then we see that's an excellent keyword for me to target. I should definitely make that video. The search volume is super high. The competition is pretty low, which means it's a great opportunity for me to rank for that keyword. And if you look at the results, this is another metric that I pay a lot of attention to. This is the exact batches and top results. That's zero. So I could change the title of the video that I have currently ranking for this keyword over here to perfectly match that keyword, or I can just type in the keyword that I put as the title, over 30 ways you can make money as an artist. And we see the summary for those results is still excellent. And there is one exact match in the top results. So the way that I sort of cheat, it's not quite cheating, but the, like, the most sure way that I try to rank really high in search is by having the exact keyword that ranks 100 out of 100 for me when I'm doing this research is like the title of my video. And if the video performs really well, that ranking will typically stick around. And search is a very big part of my overall YouTube strategy. So I have kind of an idea for who my audience is here on YouTube or who I at least want it to be. And I try to make tons of videos for that audience, trying to basically like be unavoidable for them. <laughs> like if they have a question that they type into YouTube search, I want one of my videos to pop up regardless of what the topic is. If they are searching something about art or entrepreneurship, I want one of my videos to pop up at least most of the time. And that's a huge part of my strategy. And often what will happen is that when a video performs really well like this in search, it will eventually be picked up by YouTube browse features, which is where the majority of views on YouTube come from. And that will give me a huge spike in my analytics from subscribers to views to watch hours, like what you're seeing right here in this graph. That was a enormous spike that we're seeing in my analytics. And that has led to just like a huge, a huge amount of growth for the channel, which I am incredibly grateful for and excited about, but that would not have been possible had I not used TubeBuddy to research the keywords and the topics of my videos before I made them. So when you have your video figured out, what you're gonna make and everything, now we're talking about editing and editing takes up an enormous amount of my time. I'm responsible for editing videos for my freelance clients, for my podcast, and for my channel. That adds up to a lot of hours spent in Final Cut Pro every single week. And so I'm looking for basically any way possible to cut that time down to be able to spend more of my week and my day actually making art, which is what I, you know, I'm trying to do like full time. Finding time saving tools for video editing to me is just so, so important. And I use two tools to do this. So the first tool that I use to save me time for video editing is called ReCut. So ReCut is actually really neat. It integrates best with Final Cut Pro, but there are tons of options for how you can export your files once they're all done. ReCut edits out the silence in a video clip. So for example, if you were recording a podcast and let's say your co-host kind of forgot their lines, they need to figure out what to say next. You can just pause, neither of you speak, and then once you're ready to talk again, start talking. And ReCut will detect that silence in the audio version, in the audio part of your video file, and it can just cut that out and just instantaneously like clip all of these parts together where you're actually speaking and eliminate the silence. This is great for voiceovers. Like I wish I had this tool when I was just starting out on YouTube because like speaking in public or in front of a camera is definitely a skill that a lot of people are not good at when they first start out. It requires a lot of practice. ReCut is just fantastic because it actually like sort of lets you edit way faster when you are pausing, when you need to look at your lines or your script or your bullet points or your like talking points again. It's just 
crucial. It has saved me just tons of like busy work time in Final Cut Pro. And that to me is amazing. Like the more of the small, very little, finicky, tedious tasks that I can automate out of my life, the better. And ReCut does that great. But for the times when you do have a script, when you are talking a lot, but you are stumbling over your words, where you have lots of alternate takes, where you want to find like a specific part of the video to edit out, that is where Descript comes in. So this is Descript. I have a file already in Descript right now, so you can kind of see how it works, but this is the voiceover from my 100 heads challenge video. What Descript does that is amazing and worth like the $10 a month that I pay for it is that it is written out a transcript of the entire video and I can edit the audio file by using this transcript. So I can just highlight this portion and then just delete it. It's gone. That makes combing through bad takes so amazing. <laughs> it saves me so much of my time. If you are somebody who isn't really used to filming on camera yet, you're not used to having your face in the video, you do mainly voiceover kinds of content, this is gonna be great for you. It saves so much of my time when I do voiceovers. I feel like I ramble all the time in my videos and my audio content especially, and having a thing like this that just gives me a transcript of the entire video, and then I can go in and edit the video based off of the transcript, just deleting portions at will is amazing. And the last thing that I use to save me tons of time in my small art business is Wingspan. Wingspan is like a service for freelancers, basically. I don't really know how to describe it. They do tons of stuff. You can send free invoices with Wingspan. What I really love about them is that you can link up your bank account securely to Wingspan and then categorize your business transactions. Like you can comb through all of your transactions and pick out which ones are business expenses and which ones weren't. Wingspan can help you file your taxes and Wingspan in the invoices that you send out can withhold a certain percentage of that income for your taxes to pay your quarterly taxes. And as someone who's just like really scared about the financial aspect of running a business and being like a freelancer, this has been really, really helpful for me. Like just very genuinely, it's been absolutely crucial. And if you're in the position where you have to pay for healthcare for yourself, if you don't have parents or a partner that you can get healthcare from, Wingspan actually has like a reduced price healthcare market where you can get discounts because basically like they've pooled a bunch of freelancers together and together collectively, you can pay lower premiums, which if you're in the US, is really great because healthcare costs a lot of money and it really sucks to have to pay for that for yourself. And being able to sort of eke out savings literally wherever you can is really important. Wingspan is not an exciting product, but it is really, really useful. It's not like customizable or as flashy as things like Descript or Notion or even Koji are, but like you gotta file your taxes and any way that you can make that a less painful process come tax season, all the better. So. Yeah, um, those are all of the tools that I actually have for you guys today. So I really hope that you liked this video. I know it wasn't super flashy or super entertaining, but I still think that the tools that I mentioned will really benefit you guys, especially if you are an artist slash content creator on a platform here like YouTube, or even if you're making things like podcasts or newsletters for your Patreon. So yeah basically like my idea for this channel is that i want to share my journey along the way to become a full-time artist and share my resources that i've been using to get to this point along the way so this video was a really big part of that kind of overall mission of my channel and i hope that you appreciated it but anyway have a great rest of your day and i will see you in the next one bye guys